Yeah, uh, we are looking very much forward. Let me first uh, tell everyone a few more words about uh, Leonid. He studied uh, physics in uh, Moscow, the Institute of Physics and Technology, and um, he also did his PhD there in finished it in 1977, and then uh, he moved. But then there's a gap here, but I see that in 1984, uh, he has, no, sorry, in 1984, he got the PhD in uh, Ukraine. So how comes that? Maybe my first question during the talk is then, so it says here, PhD program at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, and then in 1984, PhD at, uh, in Kharkov at the Low Temperature Physics and Engineering Institute. That's correct? Yes. Good, thank you. Um, Right, and then in 1994, uh, he received the habilitation degree, uh, which is, a higher, as we mentioned several times, a higher degree than even the PhD, which is issued in several uh, countries only. Um, and then he became a, a docent, docent in physics in 2009, but actually I should say the following, he actually, after finishing his PhD, he worked for some time at uh, the, Institute for Low Temperature Physics and Engineering in Kharkov. And then he moved to Chalmers University in Göteborg in Sweden, uh, where he is since 1995, first as a guest scientist, researcher, universitätslektor, I hope I pronounced it correct, in Swedish. And then uh, he became a co-professor in 2012, and he's there since. He researches in uh, uh, fields of electronic correlations, quantum localization, uh, uh, electron transport in low dimensional systems, Coulomb blockades, uh, mesoscopic physics, and nano electromechanics. And uh, today he will speak about mechanical assisted and ray reflection. Please, the floor is yours. Let's welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here and to make some presentation about my recent work. Maybe not big achievement. Yeah, but you see, this is step by step, and I try to find something interesting, some very simple system. And this is mechanically assisted radio collection. We will discuss this, what it is later. This is my collaborator, Sergei Gulich, who is in Krakow and continue to work in spite of the, all this terrible situation and our his friends from your institute and over sector, of course, here. Yeah. At the beginning, I would like to say, introduce myself and say a few words about my city, Kapo, which is now in some trouble, you know, as a joke. Yeah, yes, I can. Maybe it's a computer. Ah, I, maybe I have to direct the computer. Okay. Is this your computer? No. It's actually frozen. Huh? Ah. Uh -huh. I have this. No, anything, nothing works. Yes. We tried this before. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I'm originally from Krakow. This is big city. Oh, sorry. But in Ukraine, in the, where close to the border with Russia, unfortunately, and it was the first capital of Ukraine actually just before after revolution. 
Yes, and this is unique view on our city. You can see that we have a river, not big, but good. And this is uh, our central square. This is the biggest square in Europe, actually, and they say the second square in the world. And this is only part of this square. And this is, you can see, this is the top of the university. It was established 200 years, most of them. Hundred years ago, and it was the third university in the Russian Empire after Saint Petersburg University, Moscow University, and then after. So, even at that time, it was a very important in big city. And this is picture, maybe not very good, of our institute. This is Berk Institute for Temperature Physics and Engineer. And uh, there are a lot of representatives here from this institute which has connection. This is Robert Shatter, of course, Igor Lovkevich, Anton Parashila, and Olga Bakhorov. So, anyway, <laughs> yes. So, you can see that maybe it's a damn collaboration between this institute and IBC. Uh, <laughs> Has actually very rich scientific history. Only a few names. Sorry, the, 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 is the building, the, the institute building, still remains? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They still remain. Okay. But now, slide. Uh, so I don't want to reproduce this guy here from now. Course, who established action at the School of Theoretical Physics in Kakov, when he used to work in Kakov during the 30th and previous century because he moved to Moscow. Yeah, this, this is how he lives his continuum, his, his tradition, and take care, and all time we have very close contact with Moscow, this institute of uh, physical problem. And then actually we used to say that it was Landau, then son of Landau, children of Landau, then grandson of Landau, then grand grandson of Landau. And actually, this feeling continued to exist. <laughs> Maybe I can recognize myself as grand grandson of Landau. But this is no people, but what I want to pay special attention to this guy named Shubnikov is not well known. Yes. yes. Those who know Shubnikov the Gas. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, yes. No, Shubnikov the Gas. In fact, this oscillation of resistance magnetic field, which was discovered at this point. But actually, he discovered, he discovered anti He discovered type two superconductors. And actually, to some extent, he discovered Meissner effect. And Unfortunately, he was executed at the age 36. Can you imagine all of this was done before this age? So this is, and he established low temperature laboratory in Kaho, and then actually now our low temperature institute somehow continuation of his laboratory. Okay, as this is all history, now let's move to the our scientific topic. So, mechanically assisted under wave reflection. Mechanically assisted, you immediately understand that it should be some mechanics, it should be something that is moving in space and time. And what is this object? Who is our hero? And this is so called Cooper variables at the beginning. What is this? I would like to remind you. We consider small superconducting green, unfortunately. No. Uh, small, small superconducting green, how small it might be, doesn't matter. I don't want to discuss it because I'm looking for discussion. But let's say it might be of maybe 100 nanometers. Et so as compared with correlation lengths, can it be much smaller? Uh, not much smaller, but small. 
But what we what correlation lens what we need from this group? Actually, we need spectrum. For sure, this grain has a ground state. Okay, but then what is important is this ground state is separated from excited state by gap. Unfortunately, I don't know. So, yeah, by gap. And if we want to create excitation, so we create some hole and some electron like excitation about them. Yeah? But this excitation is separated from ground state. So this is object. And what we are interested in, this is situation when we have neutral grain, number of electron equal to number of ions, and let's say that this number is even for simplicity. So what changes every change the number? Of electrons on the grid. This is number. And let's investigate what's happened with the ground state. How it depends on number of electrons. If you add first two electrons, what can we do with these two electrons? We can put these two electrons on this guy, which actually condensate the experiment. So it will be the neutral state and then this natural so extra electron but if we take into account that we have small grain we have to add also electrostatic energy with charged grain greater energy than neutral grain and this is standard capacitance uh, electrostatic energy related to capacitance and this is very convenient to reduce some heat which also also can control. So this is the state of grain with two extra electrons. But what's happened if you want to add one electron? One electron. We cannot put this one electron on the seat. So we have to put it inside the state. So we have it there like this, but plus delta. This is excited state. And actually, after this, this is state with odd number of electrons. You will not have any gap between the ground state and the excited state because this electron will be here, maybe here, maybe here. But we have extra this delta. And if we compare this to energy, of course, let's neglect with this. One, but we can see that because of if this delta is very big, much greater than total energy, it means that the energy of a grain with odd number of electrons will be greater than the energy with even number. And this is what is known as a pi parity effect, and was in particular discussed in this paper many, many years ago. Okay, so we don't want to have this state with odd number of electrons. We don't want to consider, and we want to compare only the neutral grain and grain with two extra electrons. What, what to put with this guy? Actually, the number of electrons in our classical point of decay is concerned. So you would add size of electrons. So what we take away? We have to take these electrons from somewhere. So what is a candidate? Good candidate, well, super conductor. So we take, can take, for example, if we add these two electrons, we take these two electrons from this condensate to this. So this is, doesn't appear because no change of energy of chemical potential. And only this guy remains. So we have two state system, neutral, and the system is two extra electrons, which have approximately the same energy. So this is a great candidate for two level system. It's now so popular point of those quantum computers. And this is 
not science fiction. It was really science fiction was realized experimental by in famous girl Nakamura passed inside. Yes, and this is they demonstrate that this combination of well, superconductor and small three can absorb the charge with different charge and energy, which can which constituted by two states. L equal to zero, huh? let's say this one. Neutral brain and charge state with the two extra electrons. Uh, this is uh, just space. So, two level system and uh, what we have. Let me show you. Hamiltonian consists of this is standard Hamiltonian two level system. This guy. This guy this represents a full of energy. This one. It depends on the capacitor of the brain, and it will be positive, maybe negative, but it also can be equal to zero. Yes. I have a quick question. So, what happens if you have four electrons? Huh? <clears throat> I don't want to discuss this electrons, this situation, but if we have four electrons, these four electrons tremendously increase this energy, electrostatic energy. And of course, we have the, this degenerate state between two and zero. But if you put here instead of two, four, you can measure that this guy dramatically increase. And then it will be some state, of course, but very far from these two states, which we want to basically. OK, so this is charging energy. It might be equal to zero if we choose this properly. And this is so called Joseph's own energy. It's connected to the possibility of exchange of Cooper pair between this brain and also for conduct. Of course, this energy, proportional to the spread, and, uh, and also depends on the strength of tunneling pair. How easy is this electron? Two electrons can be exchanged between brains. And if tunnel barrier equal to infinity, so resistance in a normal state equal to infinity, so we will have the source of energy. And this is our object, scooper variables. What we want to do with this group? Suppose so we have may, may, may I ask you a question the previous the slide. You want to uh, smoothly uh, change the, your uh, energy from the island to bulk for conductor. Uh, is it possible to tune the capacitance from finite to infinite? Yes, it, it's everything is possible. So we have this. Prepare both of the conductor and three. This is our Hamiltonian. If we consider stationary state of this Hamiltonian, this is two state. This is energy. And if we have, for example, charging energy equal to zero, this is, for example, ground state of this system will be represented by simply one to superposition of neutral and charge. And this is one to Robert, hmm? something wrong? No. <laughs> okay. What do you want to do? So this is the standard situation. And then if we move this far away from superconductor, we will do this gently. We have to, of course, to preserve that we don't create any Citation continuous spectrum, so this velocity should be much smaller than the superconducting get absorbed. But we move it here. What's happened with this? <laughs> then this initial state will be transformed to something else, the position of the state. Built and empty, and you can calculate in the same way this unitary operator. 
And as you see, during this motion, we take into account that first, Johnson energy changes in time because it changes in space. Yes, and also heat energy also changes in space, so it changes in time. So we have to take this the exponent and to get what we have, some is the temperature, but then this is new state. And what is important, we have this to state that if you move this way far from the conductor, of course, you understand that Johnson energy equal to zero because no possibility for two electrons done of back and forth. Now it doesn't exist. But then, nevertheless, the system remains in some quantum superposition of two states, field or empty. If you want in, in, in tangle, I don't like this word, but this is not a philological question. And immediately we have smell, you smell, but Dolsky Rosen paradox, because if we make some experiment, we want to control the charge on the brain, it's immediately we have some response superconductor. Because you will find two electrons here, so we may be sure that they are not here. So it makes some. But this is a question of quantum measurement. This is absolutely that question until now. So I don't want to go into detail about this measurement. I have a question. Look at your formula, it looks like you have the linear combination rather than entanglement. So uh, I okay. This is a logical question. Of course, in some sense, this is the yeah, idea. This is from point of view of Cooper pair of two electrons. This is superposition because it may be either here or here. But if we look from general point of view and construct blah 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 blah, some somehow we can argues that it might be to some extent treated as tango of something and so on. But this is a very deep mathematical question. Okay, so I don't want, this is if you want superposition, if you want it. Okay, but then the question is how we can check and work with this superposition. What is the idea? How to taste this state? Uh, so we move this new state out. It's quite reasonable to put another superconductor and now try to measure in this state with brain with the superposition because it means it has some information about this superconductor. And now it may be without this superconductor. Uh, this work was done more than eight years ago, where we consider such circuit, so a superconducting ion, which are moving between two superconductors. And this is a gate which controls the state, the charging energy of super bones when it's decoupled from both superconductors. And what was calculated was calculated super current. It turns out that in spite of the fact that at some time the grain spent without any contact of the superconductors, it can, there is appear some superflow between these two remote superconductors. It was calculated, and this is the current. And this is a function of two parameters. This is phase, it's unfortunately possible. This is phase difference in superconductors. And this is some extra quantum phase, which this super parallel box gain when it moves far from superconductor due to the interaction with the gain. So this is interaction and this is a picture. Of course, you can see that uh, when the uh, difference between two superconductors is five or zero, so there is no car. 
it's quite understandable. If it's no difference, no difference between this superconductor and this superconductor, in which direction the turn But it's interesting that if we have, for example, standard phase difference, it's this current it appears, for example, here. Yeah, and it's possible. Yeah. And take it maximum value. But if we change now the potential and control this phase, we can move here and change even direction of the gate. So operating with this gate, which is a middle end, works only when it's very, very well separated from the attacks, we can get. Some supercurrent and this direction of the scale. But current may be opposite to the supercurrent is not used by phase difference. So you go by junction. This is what's done. And now we come to the present work. The question is what's happened if instead of superconductor, we have a normal? When it's, can we read and get some information about this sophisticated scheme? Honestly, there is another motivation of this situation before we consider the same uh, S and junction, but this is quite small distance when we have situation when simultaneous between under control, control of converted to superconductor normal metal, we apply voltage to this system by voltage, and we establish that we the possibility to isolate some mechanical development. We are so called shuttle instability appears, which result in generation of mechanical vibration between two electrodes with finite amplitude. And then Question appears okay, if current generate mechanical vibration, can mechanical vibration generate current? And this is the formulation of this problem that we want as one of the motivation. Uh, but uh, one, 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 something, okay, sorry. Uh, now about the degree reflection. So significant ingredient of this of our presentation is contact between superconducting green and, and, and normal electron. Here we have here two superconductors, so this is just some coupling because of change of point. What's happened if we have the contact between normal metal and superconductor? Oh, sorry. I think I'm just to put the <laughs> just, just some technical issues. Yeah. Here. <laughs> so let's consider, and this is now about the new wave reflection, which is the title of my talk. Let's consider normal metal and insulator. So this is for the energy. This is the gap of insulator. And what's happened if some electron move in the direction of Insulator, of course, no possibility to enter the insulator to be reflected with a reflection coefficient normal equal to one. Now let's consider the similar situation if you have instead of insulator, we have superconductor. Spectrum looks very similar, some ground state, some excited state. <laughs> Sorry. Later. Uh, yeah, but what's happened? So this electron it moves enter to the border between superconductor and uh, normal metal. But what's happened here? It might be that it pick up some electron here, and as a form of Cooper pairs, enters the condensate. And what we have instead of one incidental electron, we have one. Oh, if you move far from the superconductor, this probability one. So this is, there is no, and, and finally we, we transfer two electrons 
from normal metal to the superconductor. Actually, without any resistance. And it was this. Yes, and it was this. No reason to get reflection. But the situation is a little bit different if we insert some insulating layer, normal metal and superconductor. Because now this is no any barrier, so it's very easy to do electrons in its way to superconductors. But here it's not so easy. So we have one electron, then it's pick up some small amount, a small probability. Now the electron jump to superconductor, and what we have, and then this pair, we have partially normal reflection. The electron reflects as a normal, but partially as a whole. Sorry, what is the difference between this example and the bottom left? There is no any potential pair. Oh, I see. Because now what's happened, it transferred to electron. But you usually always have. One, you get some kind no, of no, no, originally, actually, it was discovered and was initiated by experiment by Sharon Dunn, the problem and by three. What they did, the thin uh, superconducting field applied magnetic field, yes, it's going to penetrate, but then it created so called domain structures. So this is, you can see this, this is magnetic field, so a normal part, and there's no magnetic field. Uh, of course, we have to smear it on the <coughs> correlation, the correlation length. It's not sharp, but nevertheless, the result is the same. Is the perfect uh, and the reflection uh, of hair? Bringing this the superconducting energy of this the two pair due to the and reflection is the two times for me energy. Uh, no, from, from some point of view, yes, yeah. But at the same time, if if you consider here, we remove two electrons also from the Fermi from metal. So, so, so this is Fermi energy. Is yeah. And then this is coefficient of reflection, and you can see that if resistance of this junction is quite big, R0 is this is the point of resistance of the inverse point of quite big. This is coefficient of reflection quite small because what we have we have simultaneous tunneling of two electrons through the pairing. Of course, this is amplitude of such process much smaller than the amplitude for that and for only one electron. But this is equation. <coughs> now, the system finally. So we have system, we have superconductor, and we have normal metal here. And we have this superconducting ray, which exhibits some periodic oscillation periodically approaching to the superconductor when it has some exchange of water pairs and then approaching to the normal metal, whereas the uh, underneath reflection takes place. It's also exchange of two electrons, but in a little bit different way. And then in the middle, very important, this is heat, which control the behavior of charged energy when it's separated from both superconductor and normal lead. What else is extremely important is that this amplitude, you can see, is a typical experiment that's initially about one micrometers, much greater than the size of the grain, which is, you say, 100 nanometers. And then we have either coupling to the superconductor, then complete this coupling. System from two system and then coupling to them. And we want to investigate the behavior and state of such systems from them, this periodic oscillation. Amplitude, of course, are so big that we're approaching both a superconductor and normal metal on the length of tunneling length. So we allow the exchange of electrons when we 
Marxism was very position in this synthesis. Okay, this is the system. Now, think Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian consists of A0, scooped pair of and normal metrons. And last interaction between Cooper pair of and normal matter is described by this interreactor. Well, Cooper pair of we already discussed. This is a Jolison uh, energy, and you can see the Jolison energy is, does matter only if this displacement very close to this point, when x equal to minus a. Otherwise, it's equal to zero exponentially decrease stunning plants. And this is Coulomb energy, which consists on capacitance. This is charging energy, Coulomb energy. This is self capacitance, which of course depends on the geometry and the consequence on the position of the green. Is it here or is it here? Is it here and so on? Yes, uh, but we have eliminated from this dependence some great dependence for us is very important when it's in the middle. So maybe it's under action of the big potential. You can say that this drive some geometric factor, which equal to zero, it's really far from the middle of our acceleration. Okay. Uh, may, may I ask you just uh, we understand correctly that you are doing kind of adiabatic approximation, assuming the oscillations of the shuttle small enough so you can, uh, for example, use capacitance uh, at a, a given point. Yes, of course, capacitance and point is the characteristic relaxation of capacitance. This, this is plasma frequency. Yeah, of course, our frequency is this omega of oscillation much, much smaller. This is approximately this is guy. But you have to compare it only with plasma frequency, not with the splitting of the two level system. No. 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 Also, it should be smaller than delta. Yeah, smaller but also, also delta smaller than delta. Than delta. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But, 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 but uh, this frequency uh, can be of the order of this splitting of two level system, and still you can use yes, this idea yes, of yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. But I will do it about the abandoned appreciation later. Yes, of course, there's some details. So this is a uh, pair box, each parameter is changing in time because it depends on the position of the grid. Uh, this is normal metal, nothing strange, interesting, and this is underneath. Part. What is this underneath part? So it's only work exactly when the grain goes to the normal metal, when x approximately a. Otherwise, it's exponentially decay, no, no tunneling, no coupling. And what is it here? This is some activated signal plus, which you know, tell you that this transition from neutral state to the charged state. Transition from neutral and simultaneously two electrons disappear in the matter. We disappear and we jump. And what is important that this is, of course, two electrons is opposite speed. And this is why it's worse process if we want to remove some two extra electrons from the green. Yeah, so we write segment, but as simultaneously two extra electrons appear in a Okay, this is a material, but what to do with this material? That's how to do it. Uh, we use usually a reduced asymmetric simulation. We start from the this general rule we for name and equation for the total Hamiltonian, and this is total peak density matrix, which includes superconducting grain plus normal electrodes. And this is equation, an equation. So we separate. This is especially uh, eliminate and grave interaction uh, for our reason. 
uh, it's not it's not there. And what we do, we rewrite this equation simply in this way. I can say that there is no approximation. This is simply the same integral form of this equation. But now what we have, we have this Andreev term, which is supposed to be small. Yeah, in the second order of derivation. And now we have, we can make some approximation. So actually, we suppose that this density matrix is then the product of two matrices. Rho, this is simply reduced density matrix. So total density matrix and trace over the electronic degree of freedom. Yes, and this is normal metal, which is in some thermodynamic equilibrium state. Of course, what is the basis of this approximation? We have feeling that, okay, of course, normal metal, yeah, affect somehow to state of the gray. But it's very difficult to imagine that some small gray touching this bulk electrode will significantly change something with distribution function of the power level. So this is approximation. Then what you ask for? <laughs> this method, if we use this set of inequality, <laughs> actually delta is superconducting its biggest parameter, frequency <laughs> of motion is very low, it's approximately 100 gigahertz. Temperature is not very quite small, it's greater than this gamma, and gamma is somehow strength of Andrei company. So everything is this whole approximation, of course, due to the small distances. And when we substitute this answer to this equation, then take the trace over normal state. So we exclude normal electrode, and we come to this equation for the reduced density matrix. So it consists of two parts. As you can see, first one describes the pure dynamical evolution of the gray. I don't know how. I don't want to say that this is some adiabatic evolution or whatever evolution, but this is. And this term describes the interaction with the normal electron. And then since normal electron has some continuous spectrum, this is. Yes, I, I just want to know that as soon as you know that EJ depends only on X, but not on X dot, it's already adiabatic approximation. Uh, Markovian. Yeah. Yes. Actually, no, no memory. Huh? Mm -hmm. No memory. And this is actually possible because of, of this relation. If you calculate this retardation and so on, it appears, of course. But uh, it will be small because of this parameter. It will be H gamma divided by T. And that's why we know the temperature can be very small. You can consider zero temperature. Otherwise, we have seriously taken Found of retardation and and so on. But nevertheless, we ignore all this useless Markovian approximation. And again, this is quite simple. This is unitary part, your dynamics, and this is which describe the dynamics of yours, of our superconducting green when it is in a contact with normal matter. What can we expect? This is a form of this Lagardian. In our case, it has very simple form. Looks like tau approximation simply. Uh, but it wasn't obvious from the beginning. What is raw equilibrium? So this is raw equilibrium. This is a deep distribution with a green if it's in a Constant contact with normal. If we put way yes, normal mm -hmm. and we for time, so finally we will have Gibbs distribution. And if you don't wait long time, so it will be at least some tendency to approach this. 
thermal distribution is described by this term. And this is the rate of approaching. We have some form I don't want to discuss because it depends on some feeding factors and the temperature and probability of your electrons tunnel. And then if it's tunnel, you have to take into account this is empty. Positive power is empty space for these two electrons. Is there an empty space or no? It depends on the distribution and so on. This is a sound addition, which is and, and you assume that source and drain have the same category. Okay. There is no source and drain, there's no okay. superconductor. Uh, no, you see, this temperature is much less than uh, much less than superconducting here from this yeah. point of view. Superconductor has zero temperature. No, no, you are talking about the Yes, no, yes, yes, no transfer. So, so, yes, it was the same temperature, but since the superconductor is much greater, so we don't consider any uh, real excitation. So, this, so we come to this simple equation. Again, this is feature. This again is equation. And what is for our favor? Then you see this guy multiplied by this guy equal to zero. So we have either contact with normal matter, and then we have condensation, and then we have contact with superconductor plane, maybe with this. But this is your point of the limits. Level system which is Hamiltonian depending on time. What is our aim? We want to find the stationary solution. So, something in the solution. So this is equation, and we believe that after a while, after many, many cycles, our system comes to the stationary region. In this case, periodic region. In this boundary. And what we are interested in, we want to calculate the current system. So this is a charge operator, charge drain. Yes, and what we can look, if you look here and consider this element. So what is a, what's happened with charge when it's contact normal matter? And this is a periodic variability. Of course, it will be charge in the final state minus charge in the initials. If this difference is not equal to zero, it means that some charge is here well on a normal. So this is simple equation, and this is the same expression simply as written in a simple. So our idea to calculate to find the stationary regime to calculate state of the our system in this point and compare the state of our system in this point. and this what is this quite good because we have well this operation this guy. Depends and exist everywhere and disturb us a little bit. So it's convenient to take it away. So we use this interaction of presentation, simply looking for this matrix in this form, substitute this form with this equation. Nothing happened with this term because it was sigma three. And this is we eliminate. This part of the of course, we have to wait that now we have to change periodic condition. Now, this is matrix zero, so we have to add this phase. Yes, but we have quite simple expression now of this direction. Picture now, it's very good. We have very well separated. So just, this just has some energy. Doesn't equal only the CV to this guy. Right. And this doesn't equal. Yeah. 
Окей. So it will be some initial and this 
two operators because of basic matrix and not vector. And this is unitary operator. It's have some form, it's form as form, T exponent. And we take into account that okay, this is still some energy. It doesn't equal to zero on a small interval of time, but then we have also these extra terms. And what finally we have some unitary matrix, and we will characterize by this process, by this unitary matrix. And this is some phase, and this is tau. Tau is very important. Coefficient can tell us, give you amplitude of proper meaning here to transfer charge to the Superconductor, if initially charge three approaches superconductor. Of course, rho square plus tau, rho square is remain in the same state, rho square plus tau square. But this is some parameter. Unfortunately, there is no any analytical expression for this guy. And so we have to make some numerics. We investigate how this guy depends on some parameters. It's parameters. Again, so we have two equations. We have connection uh, between T, T2 and rho zero, between T2 and T, and T connected with rho zero due to the periodic connection. So we have this whole system of algebraic equation of forces. Some number of equation we have to solve this <laughs> and expect that we maybe we have some terrible result, but we did this and uh, calculate the current and get this quite simple answer. So this is no, this is frequency, of course, oscillation because this is, this is process of transmission. And then it's proportional to tau square. Probability of operating the tunnel is superconductor is now it goes to zero. So bring the probability of the tunnel superconductor current equal to zero. And this is gamma, this probability proportional to relax to the some states, describe the probability of kind of Andre probability of Andrea's reflection, of course, in tau equal to zero, no connection is normal metal, so it's also equal to zero. What is Interesting here is some, and this is very important. It's two phases. This is about tunnel process, and this enters some phases which gain, gain when it moves around this is a circle orbit and become in a beautiful uh, external gate and so on. And this is especially separates this gate, and this is. Another phase which depends also on the phase which depends on many, many other parameters and so on, but it's not important because we see by choosing it, we always can manipulate the system. Different question. And what uh, is. Do have a question? So, how, how, how are you sure that at the end you go to the stakes and the resolution? Because... Uh, you see, uh, I answer. First of all, I find this solution simply by calculation. And then, honestly, this is my human belief from my scientific experience that if you have dissipative system, yes, and then you have some periodic, then finally you come to some periodic. Of course, I don't know if dissipative system. I don't consider as exposed as strange attractors and so on and so on. But uh, especially this is not very complicated system. This is only the level of system, it's not on the list, only actually correlation and so on. So I cannot expect from this maybe that I don't expect. <laughs> okay, so what about this parameter? So it's possible to calculate only. Numerically, in this calculation, and we can see, for example, this parameter tau as a function of delta, delta is the Jordan's on top, and the maximum is on top, and it is with different epsilon, epsilon equals zero, 
So the remove charging energy is assuming function from zero to one. Yes, if we increase epsilon, we still have a by amplitude oscillation. At the same time, the sword shows you as a function of tau and different epsilon charging energy at different level. But what is important is when we increase charging energy, we definitely decrease mm -hmm. this condition. No. no limiting cases. First, the gamma greater than one. So this is great for sign, this is great sign, this divided by this equal to one, this is a pair, and we have very simple. Actually, what's happened if gamma is big, it means that every time when the superconducting rate approaching the uh, normal metal, it comes to the thermal equilibrium from state and then move to the superconductor. Then something happened to this state, but then when the again approaches this normal metal, again comes to the super equilibrium states, thermal equilibrium states, and that's Nice and interesting, and of course, any dependence of phase is in here. It's much more interesting if gamma much less than one. In this case, you can eliminate this gamma much less than one. So when it passes the normal electrode, you don't have a nice time of thermalization. And then we approach with the superconductor again, something happens again, it's not enough time. And we get this expression. And then this is okay, so normalized coefficient. Quite easy. And this is the plot. This is the function of this point with phase difference. If tau equal to one, and we can see that in the previous slide it's possible to find scantrican and tau. So we don't have any dependence on why. What's happened? If somehow two electrons appear on the green, they for sure will be delivered to superconductor. And does it matter what's happened with phase and whatever when it transferred from one and two? But what's interesting is tau much less than one. If it was this, you get this sharp resonance. Because when sign equal to zero, if this is equal to one, tau tau disappear, and we still have no problem. Very sharp resonance is a function of the sum quantum phase. I don't know what it is, actually. For me, it's surprising. I don't honestly want to tell you that I have any physical interpretation. How oh, you can control it? By gate. This is this is phase difference. This is phase depends on parameter of the system. But this guy depends only on this gate when it's in central position. And changing the voltage on the gate, I think it's easier to change this difference. I don't know what is the central point of this fire, does it matter? But for sure, I think always to adjust in a such way that this is equal to this. So this is the result. We have very sharp, I don't know, the resonance in some senses, a quantum resonance, in which space is quantum resonance, I don't know. But what is more important, I forget to mention, that everything is, it doesn't imply any bias voltage. So we have current only due to the mechanical motion. Yeah? So this is some mechanical form. Of course, uh, to say that nothing is strange, this mechanical pump is known for 2,000 years from Archimedes, suppose. 
and then some political group. So when we get a commotion, we give some direct flow or something of water and of electrons. So here is for repairs. Uh, but uh, what is interesting here is that it is to some sense quantum because it's controlled by this quantum fields. And then we have this awesome this red energy. That's it. So thank you for attention. Thank you, Daniel, for the very nice presentation. We still have some time for questions. What I was questioning the, the feature, the, the, the plot in the last slide. And, uh, <laughs> yes, here, the, uh, I think that uh, you see this the periodically in the face of more the pipe. No, of course. Right. Yes, but uh, yeah. so it's not a too high, but high. Is, is there any? I don't know. You don't understand the nature of this phenomenon. You ask why it's why not too high. So, more questions? Let me ask you uh, a simple one, maybe. So this Andreev reflection, which you described at the beginning, does it uh, does it uh, 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 does it need uh, momentum con conservation in the superconductor? Uh, actually, the energy energy is clear, but do you need also momentum conservation? Uh, yes, obviously. yes. Uh, I mean, how how much is that uh, momentum conservation guaranteed in your in your small box? Is it still a well defined uh, quantum number? No, but you, you see, I don't spoke honestly. What about this Andrea reflection and so on? We. This. You see, this is the Andre term. It's something that actually could be honest. This is an analogical description. You don't bother about anything that's happened, but I'm because it's quite complicated and difficult problem because you can take into account this is a small grain, there's energy conservations and tunnel and Hamiltonian, we have to start with a single electron tunnel and actually and then derive it in the second order. Now instead of this we suggest this is phenomenological term we simply describe very simple this is pair two electrons dot and pair two electrons gentlemen uh, gentlemen uh, you know, it's okay, but uh, I was just expecting maybe Robert, you can comment also on this question. So, how is this uh, 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 this Andreev reflection uh, guaranteed to work in the case when your superconductor becomes smaller and smaller, becomes this small thing, which is a great and well, the 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 box, the box, yes, because at some point maybe momentum conservation is not anymore. So, so can you comment on? That? So about momentum, this, this is no momentum consideration because here, this is tunnel bearing, mm -hmm. huge tunnel bearing, which avoid any momentum consideration. So this is phenomenological. So with the, with the two electrons disappear and appear at which. So basically, you see, Andreev reflection can be observed down to the smallest sizes of a superconducting grain. Yeah, yeah. As long as you have a, a gap, uh, all, all is fine, so to say. Yeah. You have to have condensate, superconducting condensate with pairs. Yep. If delta becomes up to it, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. More questions? 
doesn't seem to be the case. So let's thank uh, Leonid very much. Thank you very much. And uh, there should be some food. Uh,